Welcome back to Daily Premonition, everybody! Uh, we're about ready to finish up the first chapter. Welcome back, everyone. Ah, uh, Thomas. Agent Morgan, it's past 2100. Let's meet up again at the community center tomorrow. I haven't been sleeping much since this all started, to be honest. I'm exhausted. I was just about to suggest the same thing. I'll make arrangements for people to gather between 1500 and 1700. I'll try and get as many people as I can to come, so don't be late, okay? Don't be late. I'll be there. The community center's on the south side. I've marked it on your map. Thanks! Well then, see you tomorrow. So we got a little bit of free time. Literally have a lot of free time. I don't know what to do with my. Oh, you know what? First of all, I'm gonna get in a car that actually yeah, has some something here fucking you gas. You need to be at the community center by 1500 today. Just think of talking in front of all those people. What do you think, Zach? It's going to get fun. How do you know? It's gonna suck for me. I guess while we're here, we can waste a little time. Maybe, uh, maybe get a cart. Want to get a cut? Hmm? If I can. Oh my gosh. I think I can. No? Nah, it's not a big deal. We're probably gonna Speaking go ahead and religious. find a. One jewel in the rough springs to mind. A bed. Deadly spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83. Directed by Douglas McCown. Right. It was filmed pretty cheap, but still, it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth. I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. wonder how the sequel turned out. You know, the monster in that one responded to sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. He knows the stuff. It was back in 89, directed by Ron Underwood. Now, that was a great role for Kevin Bacon. Masterpiece. Zach, that one had sequels like crazy. I remember there was a fourth one. I've only seen the first one, though. Unfortunately, I'm not going to fucking wait until 3 o'clock to do all this and don't remember if there's a place to sleep up there so I guess I'm just gonna sleep at the next available place because um, I know I said a couple uh, videos back I was gonna get the radio by now I'm just really lazy so and every time I try to go into one of the earlier chapters uh, turns out that it's not raining and like I said before we need it to be raining to get that flower so wow <laughs> that just stopped us uh, to get the radio eventually this gives me a chance to you know think about my life think about what I'm doing driving down a tunnel which apparently nobody has any fucking sense to clean up of course note going by the cops in this town I'm not surprised when nothing is getting done <laughs> amusing story no I'm joking um but uh... Oh. Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it you really had to think about that? I say Fred Ward and I say Remo Williams the adventure begins that one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. Guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007. But it had no sequels. A real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sinanju? The sure. The old in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Remo's master Chun ran across water, remember? And he loved soap operas. Man, that was a good character. He was played by Joel Grey. 
the best supporting actor in Cabaret. Of course, in Remo, he had so much makeup on, you couldn't tell. I'm going to pause it here for a second and see where there's a bed. I think there's one down the street. Yes, there is. Because I don't think there's one up here. Oh, whoa, okay, that's not the way to go at all. Point is, we need to get some sleep, because it's almost midnight, and that means bad things happen. I'm eventually going to be out at that time at one point in this game. And so you get to see those giant fucking Rottweilers. And no, I'm I'm not joking. There's literally a giant Rottweiler that just appears out of nowhere. Of course, this game already makes no sense, so why not? Let me get over there. Wop, 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 wop. Having fun with horns. It's either the the end of this ch chapter or a very short one. I don't know. We're we're very close to the end of the first episode, at least. Um, which is good because we're making good time. Okay, now time to do some basic math here. Um, oh, they put us way far out. Okay. Probably going to be starving after this. So let's say... Nine hours? Let's see where that puts us. Hmm. Hmm. This is actually an interesting conundrum. Do we go look for that flower? I think we're going to go look for that flower. We're also going to get something to eat. As these... I'm just going to eat everything. Pickles do a good job, too. I'm impressed. So we still have about seven-ish hours uh, before we have to actually get on to our mission. But I don't know how long it's going to be raining, so I would love to see if we can find that flower. And we may have to go a little bit ways, I don't know. But we're going to find it. Just you and me, buddy. You and me against the world. Now, Joel Gray's daughter is, of course. That's right, Jennifer Gray. You knew that, right, Zach? Jennifer Gray. She's in one of my most favorite movies. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I just watched that. By John Hughes. <laughs> that one was so 80s. <laughs> Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy I know. But you really do like those cheerful movies. We used to love those teenage movies back then, didn't we? Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink, St. Elmo's Fire, and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Heckerly. Now that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn in the lead, with Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates, not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker were in it too. And the original book and the script were written by Cameron Crowe. How could that not be a great film? Do you remember, Zach? When There's one. Ended, the last words, the end, was from an arcade game. That's right, it was from Missile Command. That stuck in my head for a while. The memories. I feel like I have a lot of movies to catch up on. Let's just hope we can get to the end of this case soon. Then maybe we can catch up on a few. Give some thought about them. Hmm? Zach, we'll finish our chat later. Let's take a walk around here.
this flower. There's something very mesmerizing about it. I wonder what it's called. I'll take one with me and ask someone later. Maybe I can get a radio out of it. And then since there's a bed right here, why not? Let's go right to bed. So we only need, uh, do, like, a little less than eight hours. But I actually want to get there on time, so I'm gonna... I don't know... Well, I'm going to do six, and if we still need a little bit of time, I'm going to... You can actually smoke and burn hours off. So, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. It'll work. Don't, don't question it. Still doing good on gas. Think we can get there in time. Think we can do it. Definitely cut back on these driving sequences. I know that's probably going to be half this this playthrough is just driving sequences if I don't get that radio. Zach, picking up from where we left off, now Joel Gray's daughter is, of course, that's right, Jennifer Gray. You knew that, right, Zach? Yeah, she was in Jennifer Ferris Gray. Bueller's Day Off. She's in one of my most favorite movies, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ah, uh, unfortunately, I have to interrupt him again. Because i got to remember where I'm going. It's okay. We just won't do that conversation again. Okay, so we need to take a right on which street and then take a left on... Well, all those other streets there. And then we'll have made it. This is a, a a neat part actually because, um, yeah, I know I missed it. We get to meet. <laughs> okay, we get to meet everybody in the town, which is a necessary evil. But this also means that we get to see all the crafty characters and possibly Twin Peaks inspired uh, people. So it'll work out in the end, I think. Good news is we only need about two. God damn, dude. Fucking tired. Cars need to stay on their tires. I'm just gonna park like a Neanderthal and then, uh. just smoke for the shit of it. We only need to smoke till three. And the game will do the rest. No jazzy music at all either. That's kind of disappointing. There's Harry and, and Michael and Suspect. <laughs> Obviously we haven't met that person yet. But we will soon, as everybody in the town will be here. Hmm. I think this is a door. I don't know how to go in. Now that's an impressive building. Clock tower is impressive too. This looks like a lot of people. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. 
I'm not some tree in the wind this time either. And that was a tough roll. That was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Could she just say FBI? Good afternoon. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. You can call me York. Some of you are already. Oh, <gasps> he didn't say it. Tragic murder of Anna Graham. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. Meanwhile, Thomas is looking at Reddit. This young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I asked to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Don't go outside. Those of you with children. Especially of Anna's age. Please, guide your children away from such places at all costs. Don't have children. Don't have sex, ever. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now, I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a chance that the murderer is mimicking the story. Women should also be especially careful... I would hate to see more victims... Oh, way to be misogynistic. Who's the fashionably late one? That's Carol. Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. Wonder who's the more feminine one in that family. <coughs> Thomas. <coughs> so, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Wow, we all gathered for that stupid piece of crap five minute presentation? Thanks! Could have probably just told us over the radio or something, you know? Town's pretty big. I'm sure people had to drive 20 minutes to get here. Like me. Can they just send out a newsletter at that point and be like, hey, don't leave? There's probably somebody that's up to no good. I don't know. It seems to be. For our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. When purple fog covers our town. We'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. Also, that did come into a rhyme. That, that's good. I was worried there for a second. Sure knows how to steal thunder. Well then, Zach, let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Lock the doors! You're not going anywhere! Agent York, your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. I loved her brother. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A tattoo? 
I do, actually. But what? Everybody tag off your clothes! Happened. What? Now? Here? Everybody asks like I'm yeah. asking to show them, you know, show me their privates. Okay. If it's gonna help you any. <laughs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... Did it tell you anything? Yeah, you're gay. It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? You ought to see that tattoo, Zack. A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. Hmm. I don't know when he got that done, but... I wonder who that could the be. Quite a performance. Mysterious and very poetic. But I don't think many of your audience appreciated it. Why can't you just talk to me? Like a man. Mr. Francis York Moore. The purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out quite the poet. Soil. Remove the source from which it boiled. Oh, now you're just and stretching. Then your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the proper time. It is not yet mine. Mr. Stewart's time, not mine. But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is... Talk to me in to Chapter 3. Informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry, you know something. But there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. We could force you to talk, you know. Mr. Francis York Moore, pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. <laughs> Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. It's half the town just watched me get lectured by a guy in a mask. But don't worry. Me and Zach, we know what we're doing. No, I'm not doing this for my own good. You have to talk to everybody. Are you finished asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. I'd rather not. It's all the same to you. We get to meet the general, which is not the patch on his arm. I think his name's the general. You're a regular snake, Pliskin. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the general. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Government took my house. Hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. Your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Yeah, I'm him. Problem? What of it? Wanna you fight me? Imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore, and a fairy tale. It's based on actual events that happened in this town. It is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> You kids today don't even know how to ask for something, right? <laughs> Soldier, if you want to hear more, you come to my office. He literally exudes raw power, Zack. Despite the credibility issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though. He calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? He's a phony! 
actually genuinely curious if there's a phone around here that I can save. There is! You know what that means? We're going to stop here for today. But uh, join us tomorrow and we're going to talk to the rest of these people who I'm sure have very interesting lives. Such as this one. And this one. And even... Uh... Even this one over here. This this one looks like Don Cheadle. Bye everybody.